that I cannot believe that there is anything more or anything different that I could have done and it would have been more successful. It's all about for us in the car railway station. Good afternoon. This building was built by the Canadian Pacific Railway in 1900, finished in 1901, and remained vital of operation for railroading until 1994 in Canada, at which time it was abandoned in 1994 along with all the operations in the rail yard that once employed a thousand people in the small village of Macau. Macau Historical Restoration Commission, the organization that tried to preserve this building the way back beginning in the 19, or 1980s, unsuccessfully worked with the Canadian Pacific Railway to try to preserve this national icon, getting absolutely nowhere. The situation did in fact never improved, not even after the CPR decided to leave town. But thanks to the purchase of the rail lines in Macau, by the NB Southern Rail, a company formed by the Irving family. We were able to get this building acquired in 1996 by the Irving family purchasing this and donating this to the McAdam Historical Restoration Commission. We were delighted to get the building, but all of a sudden we realized, what are we going to do with it? It really was only a few years ago that this happened. We own this relic this derelict building of absolutely no value, and mostly no value to the cattle. Many could be heard saying, tear it down, get rid of it, bulldoze it into the very pond that sits behind it. It's of no value to this community. Those cries were loudest, of course, from those who were displaced, the railway workers who had been laid off over the years. Many of them grumbling many of them upset with what had happened to their jobs as they were displaced. And of course, there were their pensioners, many of those who drew good pensions from the railroad. They joined in the discussion. The wounds were deep. Direct employment for the village of McAdam had been impacted. We were a one industry town about to take a major hit. Nothing new to New Brunswick. Indirectly, businesses and services were also being impacted, and it was very clear the village of Macadam was headed for a nose star. This community that once has valued the railroad for more than a century had now turned on it. The new owners, the Macadam Historical Restoration Commission, had this treasured Canadian icon, so we thought, but hard to talk about in the village of Macadam and much worse to walk about it was even a greater challenge. We had a handful of dedicated people with a goal, with a plan, but nowhere to sell it. We desperately needed funds to preserve this station, to avert vandalism, or perhaps even to avert its entire loss. We did manage so with some financial support just a year or so after the building became ours to do something with, to board it up. What a success for us, right, to board it up. And so we did from top to bottom. And there it sat, this great, big, humongous railway station with all its pride and glory adorned in the village of Macadam for three years, totally boarded up. But then in 2000, we decided we had to do something, or perhaps many of those in Macadam were right, tear it down, bulldoze it into the pond. So during the McAdam homecoming celebration, we decided to open a portion of the building. We tore off the plywood covering the windows and doors and opened one room, just the waiting room. That room was open for the inquisitive 
and of course all the naysayers to also join in. Thousands came though, and thousands looked, and what they saw they liked. With encouraging words, financial donations were actually made on that one single day, for during a four hour period, people came and had a look. They had a peek of a very small piece of that icon in the village, donating upwards of $20,000 in that short period of time. We received some sparks of interest from all those who attended that event, many of them from the Canada and many from outside the region, who told us, do something about this and do it now. Get active and get going. A door had opened, it was time for us to do something, and there lay for us an opportunity to rekindle, for the first time, a community spirit, a community spirit that had been broken. There was much talk and there was much walking about what to do at the same time. And we found that there were so many people across New Brunswick and elsewhere, our neighbors to the south, who knew the value of this building and wanted to make sure we preserved it. So like eating an elephant, one small bite at a time, we set to work to restore the McAllen Railway Station. Our first connection for us in that community came with the realization of the part that this station played in the history of not just our community, of not just New Brunswick, but the history of Canada. We suddenly realized that the walls that we had created around the village had prevented us from the actual opportunity to enhance and develop the building. This was not a New Brunswick historical site. This building was part of the building of a nation, our nation, Canada. We realized how important it was, and it was time for us to take that importance and to deal with it. It went far beyond the borders of McAllen, and more importantly, it was not about building, it was about people. The historical uh, attention from McAllen around this building was about the people who worked for the railway, those who lived in the community, and most of all, those who passed through the community. A broader base of committed individuals existed everywhere, and once we were able to get the word out and listen to what they had to say, we now knew it was time to step up to the plate. They were prepared to help us to do that, and so we set our goals and off we went. The first thing we did was gather and listen to the stories, because it was the stories about the people that really great gave us the great success of moving forward with the restoration and preservation of this building. We then realized that everything that happened here was about people. Let's not restore the building. Let's rekindle the spirit of the people. And that's what the McAllen Railway Station has done. Our first most successful goal was listening to the stories of all the young ladies who worked at the McAllen Railway Station. They were between the ages of 16 and 20, and they lived on the third floor in dormitories. Those ladies served food in both the lunch counter and the very elegant dining room and looked after a 20-bed hotel on the second floor. The only Canadian Pacific Railway station in Canada with its own hotel in the actual building. We listened to those stories from seniors. Many seniors who worked there still lived in McAllen. We got those stories and we repeated those stories, and I think we may have exaggerated a few of them too. <laughs> but we also found a young author who decided that he could do something to help spread those stories. And he did. He interviewed hundreds of people in the community and with friends and with his sister doing the graphics, the graphic work, we wrote and he wrote, I should say, we contributed to writing and he wrote the Abigail stories. Abigail being one of the characters who worked in the railway station. And you've seen a little excerpt of a little of the promotional material that we have on Abigail. This was a phenomenal venture. And Mark Walmer, the author of those books, joins us today in the back row back there. Mark, we take a bow because you and your sister have been phenomenal for the Railway Station. Mark's sister lives in Toronto, and Lynn has done all the graphics as well as much of determining the production cost 
for these books. Not only did Mark and Lynn write and prepare those books, they were a 100% donation in all the time and energy. I think it's the first artist I've known and writer that 100% donated the production of those books. And thanks to Mark and his sister, we have an $80,000 revenue so far in the sale of the Abigail books. This was a turning point to McAllen taking ownership of their building. It was their stories being told. And the books have had a hot cake, have been a hot cake for us. We're told actually by many people that buy the books and share the New Brunswick experience, tell us you have the Anne of New Brunswick. <laughs> PEIers will know what I mean by that. We also heard stories of many other events, and I need to watch my time so I can cut my stories because I have a lot of them. Two minutes, and I have a little video to show at the end. So I'm just going to go to one other one, and then if you want to ask me some questions at the end, I will. But let me share with you railroad pie. How many have tried it? Anybody from New Brunswick? They got some railroad pie. 22 kinds of homemade pie. Served every Sunday afternoon in July, August, and September. Railway pie is made in Macadam because it was made in Macadam. And railway pie is served by people in Macadam who serve now about 400 pieces of railway pie on a Sunday afternoon in three hours, generating revenue to move this station forward. The stories are told, and two of the ladies in that room who helped make the pies worked at the railway station during the time when they were being served. It's a long story about railway pie. It's part of the history and as part of the community. Everything we do at the railway station now is connected to people. It's all about the people's stories and the people events. Whether we decorate for Christmas, whether we tell stories of, of the characters who live there or who moved there, who traveled through there. We talk about Marilyn Monroe who ate in the dining room. And we talk about Babe Ruth because he ate there too. And we talk about Barbara Ann Scott, who skated on that actual pond in the picture. So we rekindle all of the experiences that people have had, and we therefore move the station forward. And a little closing excerpt to tell you how Abigail is perceived by Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. There are storm clouds on the horizon, New Brunswick. Troubled times ahead. And there's only one person who can lead us through this challenging period in our history. She understands the value of health care. She embraces our three major cultural communities, French, English, First Nation. She supports Canada's military, and she believes in preserving our infrastructure. She's Abigail Massey at McAdam Station, conservative in her dress, liberal with her kindness, new to the democratic process, as green as anyone was in the 1940s, appearing November 9th in a McAdam Station Christmas. A Christmas story about New Brunswickers, for New Brunswickers. Pick up your copies of all of Abigail's adventures at the following locations around New Brunswick.